2 Kings chapter 20, and I just want to read a couple verses. In those days, beginning at verse 1, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Ammon, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And then the king Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord saying this, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept and it came to pass afore and Isaiah was gone before he was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came um, to him and he went back to the king and said Hezekiah the captain of my people here's what God is saying the God of David thy father I've heard thy prayer I have seen thy tears I will heal thee on the third day I just want to talk about God reversed it God reversed it King Hezekiah, the 20th king of Judah, was a man of extraordinary qualities and righteousness. And you know what? We don't hear that description about people these days, a person of extraordinary qualities and righteousness. But he, King Hezekiah had been a comfort to the suffering people while his godless father was on the throne at a time when Judah had sunk to the bottom of political and spiritual deprivation. Sounds like the times we're living in right now. But when King Hezekiah ascended to the throne, he de dedicated himself to the complete reversal of the policies of his father. He not only destroyed the numerous idols which had disgraced his kingdom, but he also cut down the groves of idolatry which had been spared even by some of his religious predecessors. And what he did was he reinstated real worship to the Lord. The temple was thoroughly cleansed and renovated and its old glory was so impressive that the people started running back to the house of the Lord in genuine worship. They started running back to the house of the Lord, even bringing their tithes and their offerings. The prophet Isaiah encouraged King Hezekiah with a divine assurance rather that no nation, no demonic forces would be able to harm him or the nation because he and the people had returned back to the Lord. But the Bible says that King, King Hezekiah became critically ill and the prophet Isaiah came to him and said, you're going to die because God was displeased with him because he had not married. Now, historians never tell us why he did not marry, but that is interesting. He did not marry, and God was displeased. Uh, what it is indicative of that God really takes marriage seriously, that marriage is not a, a, a living relationship where you have a long-time partnership, where you just live in the same house, and if you have issues, uh, you all decide to do your own thing. You live on one side of the house. I live on the side of the other. No, marriage to God is 
significant to him. Uh, it's a commitment. It is a long relationship of uncommitted love and uncommitted sharing between two people. The Bible says that God was displeased with King Hezekiah because he did not marry. And the Bible says that he was going to die. And if he, King rather Hezekiah uh, was critically ill today, it would probably have been from the attack of the coronavirus would attack his respiratory system, would attack his lungs, his kidneys, his heart, and even his brain. And he found himself on a ventilator machine, barely able to breathe. And you can live for the Lord. You can praise him. You can worship him with genuality, with every fiber in your being and serve God with all of your might and still have problems. You can serve the Lord with everything you have and find yourself in circumstances that contradicts everything that God has promised to do in your life. Sometimes God will allow things in your life to go from difficult to impossible before God steps in and decides to bring you out. When the king heard the prophet's word, set thine house in order, King Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed with such intensity, imploring God that he might recover and still live. And there's one last thing today that I want to say about prayer, and it is that prayer reverses every negative situation that is supposed to happen in your life. Let me say that again. My last point today, and I'm finished with this series, is that prayer reverses everything negative that is supposed to happen in your life. Prayer does not necessarily change God, but what prayer will do, it will reverse some things in your life. Don't try to change God, for God changes not. God said in the book of Malachi, I am the Lord God, and I don't change. David said, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. In your prayer life, you don't want to change God, for if God were to change, it would suggest that either cease to be perfect as he was or he is not as perfect as he's going to be. The reason why God does not change is because God is too perfect to be improved upon and he is too eternal to cease to be as perfect as he is now. So God told Malachi, I am the Lord thy God. I'm not one of your running buddies. I don't change. So don't try to change me when you pray. So, Bell, if prayer doesn't change God, why should I pray in the first place? Because prayer will reverse everything negative that is supposed to happen in your life. Prayer reverses negative attitudes. Prayer reverses negative situations and circumstances on your job. Prayer will reverse negative forces and spirits that would try to attack your house and your family. Prayer gives you favor against uh, those things that will want to come against your mind, uh, come against your body, and come against your spirit. Uh, what you do is go to your secret closet. Uh, you don't have to cover it up. Uh, stop putting makeup over it uh, and just pray. Somebody shout pray. God said, if my people who are called by my name uh, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways, uh, then I would hear from heaven uh, and I will forgive their sins and heal the land. Uh, God said, if you would pray, uh, he would heal the land. Uh, and right now, our land is in need of healing. Uh, our nation is in a mess. Uh, racial protests have rocked every major city. Uh, and county and town in this nation. Unemployment has soared. The coronavirus has spiked and surged in many areas to an apocalyptic proportion. And Americans can't even agree if they should wear face masks in the midst of a pandemic. And as the U.S. plunges into an even deeper coronavirus record setting of new infectious 
straight and the death curve begins to rise again and there is no prospect of this nightmare ending anytime soon this president and his delusional reality and his perverse claims that the United States is the world leader in breaking this dreadful virus is nauseating at his best and then add to it with his narcissistic sociopathic psychotic attitude and behavior sitting there at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue he remains in denial about this pandemic while millions of Americans are dying every day and all he has time to do is to tweet and start a cultural race war that's not going to end well for him because we are preparing right now an eviction notice that we're going to serve him on November the 3rd. Somebody shout, it's time to serve him. These may seem, I feel like preaching today. Pastor been struggling the last couple weeks because my knee injury had been killing me. But thank God for healing. He will heal. And I'm feeling so much better. These may seem like some chaotic times, but the prayers of God's people is shifting America at the very core of its being. We are seeing armies of Americans taken to the streets. All races, all nationalities, all religious persuasion to protest racial injustice. We are seeing major companies and major corporations taking an unprecedented stand to move against racial and social injustice in this land. Something has shifted. Somebody said it's shifted. Something has shifted in America. When the Mississippi state flag, which bears the cross of the Confederate battle flag, has been taken down while the popularity of Black Lives Matter movement has soared to an all-time high. Something has shifted in America. For God said, if my people would pray he would heal he'll heal your finances he'll heal your families dysfunction he'll heal your heart you don't need to have a heart attack you need to have a prayer attack you don't need to have a nervous breakdown or a meltdown you need to get down on your knees turn your face to the wall because your prayers will cause God to reverse everything negative situation in your life get yourself off of your cell phone get off of Twitter and Instagram cut your TV off pull down the blaze lock yourself in your house tell the devil coronavirus you can't have my body depression you better get out of my head no devil cause I've learned how to pray you're fooling with the wrong person now turn my child loose turn my husband loose turn my credit loose turn my finances loose turn my future loose because God said if we pray somebody say pray there is nothing wrong with you that God cannot reverse there is nothing wrong with you that God cannot heal God's waiting for you to get down on your knees and call upon his name I feel today a prayer attack I'm about to get the floor right now I feel an earthquake shaking a mighty rushing wind of God I feel the saints of God going and deferring prayer I'm finished now but oh He ran across, but the Bible says one day on the road to Damascus, he saw a great light that knocked him off his beast, and he began to see God when Ananias hears about it. 
Ananias says, I'm afraid of Brother Paul. But the word came to Ananias saying, don't worry about old Paul now because he's praying now. Because when you pray, it will reverse negative things in your life. When you pray, it will turn your entire life around. I want to talk to somebody as I get ready to take my seat. I want to talk to somebody who used to be, you used to be, used to be on drugs, used to be an addict, used to be an alcoholic, used to be a womanizer, used to be a woman abuser and a child abuser, used to be tied up by the curse of your past, you used to have thoughts of suicide, you used to to be down, so angry, so mean, so frustrated, but you're praying now, somebody give a high five to the Holy Ghost and say pray, pray, if you got problems, just pray about it, if you got issues, call on his name, yeah, yeah, tell daddy about it, touch somebody, Tell them, tell daddy about it. If you're sick and tired of being sick, tell daddy about it. If you're sick and tired of the enemy trying to bully you around, tell daddy about it. If you're tired of the enemy taking your lunch money, tell daddy about it. Yeah, tell daddy about it. Because we got a God that is able. knows how God is able. Somebody shout able, able, able. Come on and lift your hands and say he's able. Can anybody testify that you know for yourself that he's able? Oh, come on, give God some praise right there where you are. God reversed it. Ah, come on, come on, give God some praise. God reversed it. Prayer changes things. God reversed it. Hey, and I don't know about you, but that we know what happens when you tell Daddy about it. Oh, my God. Come on, give God praise wherever you are. Wherever you are, wherever you are, the Lord has spoken a word. The Lord has spoken a word. God reversed it through prayer. My beloved, what an opportunity today it is to see God reverse situations in your life. And we know he has reversed it and done some wonderful things because God answers prayer. We give God praise of Pastor Bell and this very timely word for us on today. And we thank God. We need How many of you can say out there? We needed that. How many of you on Facebook Live, you can just type and say, thanks, Lord, I needed that. Go on, type it right now. I see you on there. Just type and say, thanks, Lord, I needed that. I needed that. I needed it for my house, for my family, for my business, on my job. I needed that. I needed that. I needed that. I needed that. And thank God for his word and for blessing us today. God reversed it. Beloved, what is it that you need God to reverse in your life? For those who don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, He already reversed the curse of sin, suffering, and sickness on the cross almost 2,000 years ago. He's already reversed that. He reversed the curse of poverty and misery He's already reversed that. He has reversed your griefs and sorrows. You don't have to carry them. He will. He's reversed that. And so you say, Pastor, if he's reversed that, how do I 
take advantage of that. Well, you heard the preacher said, you just call on daddy. And uh, Jesus said, when you go to my father, our father in heaven, you, you just go in my name. So if you say, Father, I've sinned, I've come short on your glory, forgive me. We call it ABC. We admit, we believe, and we confess. We admit that we've said, hey, Lord, I'm sorry, I need to get right. We believe in our hearts that God sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. And that C, we confess. What are we confessing? He's my Lord, my Savior. And just like you heard Pastor Bell closing out with, tell Daddy, you can go to Daddy yourself as one of his children in the name of our elder brother Jesus. And just like that, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Prayer changes things. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad for prayer that made a difference in my life. You may have heard this word today and been blessed to say, you know, I don't have a church home. And you need to reverse spiritual homelessness. Let me say that one more time. You need to reverse the spiritual homelessness in your life. You live in a wonderful 3,000, 2,000, 1,500 square foot condominium, townhome, house. But you are spiritually homeless. Jesus is your Savior and you are on your way to your eternal home. But you don't have a place to drive to in the Spirit where you can find comfort and encouragement and safety and shelter. And living off of the internet just doesn't get it. You do want to be connected with a community, even if it is virtual. You do need to talk to somebody sometime. And so if you're here and, and you're hearing my voice and you are spiritually homeless, there is a number on the screen you could call. We'll get in touch with you. My email address, you could email and say, you know what, Pastor C, I, I want to join Union Bethel. 133 years, y'all been around, and Pastor Bell came and preached, and I want God to reverse spiritual homelessness, uh, homelessness in my life. God will do that for you. He will do that for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for everybody under the sound of our voice right now. We admit that we've sinned, come short of your glory. We believe in our heart that you died for us and that you were raised up so we could be raised up. We confess you, our Lord and Savior of our lives. We thank you that through prayer, you will come and reverse situations in our lives. So God, do it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you heard my voice, you prayed that prayer and you believe in your heart, I want to hear from you that you have been blessed today. Thank God for reversing it. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the power of the Word. And Lord knows we thank God for the preacher of the Word. And you, we have been blessed in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus and beloved, we thank God for this word today from this servant. My soul has been blessed. Uh, it's giving time. Come on, give God some praise. It's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving time. And we thank God for what he is doing. I am simply amazed and I marvel at the generosity and kindness of the Union Bethel congregation. And many of you saw this week that we were able to deliver a check for $15,200 uh, to Captain Levi Carson, the uh, assistant commander of District 4, uh, for who is spearheading the effort to do 20, to feed 2,500 families. I didn't say 2,500 people. I said 2,500 families. Hello. Yeah, so that could be close to 10,000 folks. And uh, we'll be uh, doing our part at North on the 21st and stand by. We'll be doing uh, our part here uh, that same weekend. And we're looking for the time. Our missionaries will give us leadership in that regard. 
but I want to thank you for your faithfulness and your stewardship. To our members, we ask you simply for what? $133 church anniversary, a dollar for every year. Uh, somebody ought to be glad we're not 233 years old, uh, but we thank God for $133. And let me, uh, where's my mask? I set it down somewhere. Uh, I think it's over there. It might have fallen down. Uh, the Union Bethel mask that we have, I do apologize. I wanted to show it to you. Um, we have for the first, thank you, sir, first 130, I'm sorry, 125 persons that give. We want to send you one of the Union Bethel church masks, uh, wonderfully designed, our sister uh, connection through our sister Darlene Hall. Uh, and, we're, and we had these made through her, just uh, I think it's about 250 black and white. And so we said that for those persons who, first persons to give, 125 persons to give, that $133, we will send you a black one and a white one, and uh, we're going to continue to develop more of these, and uh, you'll see sometimes some of our uh, AV team has on the new church shirt uh, that everyone will have, and you'll be able to on the same shirt uh, to put maybe the ministries that you are a part of. As I said to, we were talking the other day, I don't know of any pro football team, pro basketball team, pro baseball team that allows its players to design its own uniform. Hello, and wear their own jerseys, amen. Where whether you're offense or defense, you all wear the same uniform. That's what unity is about. And so we thank God uh, for that. We will be releasing that very shortly, but uh, already this week, several persons have already given uh, their $133 and we wanna say thank you. And so those persons, are, we already begun mailing these out to those persons, and uh, we're going to keep mailing them out till they're all gone. And when they're all gone, we'll get some more and send them to you because that's our way of saying thank you uh, for your love gift of $133 in honor of the church anniversary. Even if you're not a member and you say, hey, I want to sow and bless, we will send that to you. And so know that here's what your seed is doing. You will help to feed 400 families on November 21st. 400 families. We're also going to bless our seniors. Our missionaries are going to take care of that piece. Come on, get that. that that's, 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 amen, amen. That's a God bless you. And that's, as uh, Reverend Erica and I were talking this week, and she said, Rev, this is all the church. And I said, yeah, this is all the church. And uh, that's what it's about. It's the Union Bethel Church making a difference in the lives of God's people. And so that's up in District 8 at North. We've got some other things we'll do down here uh, in Brandywine, which is District 9. And so we're just excited about that. And so this week, I I've been on several international calls, and I don't know why that happened on Tuesday. Call from France uh, because uh, uh, we had one of our, uh, uh, in, in Lyon, France, which, we're, which is one of our wonderful churches in the 16th district. I have preached there on a number of occasions. Uh, we have an awesome church there, about four or 500 folks. Most of them are French-speaking West African. They're from uh, DRC and, and Cote d'Ivoire and these places and have a wonderful church there. And there was a pastor that was shot also in Lyon, France. So I called some and we connected and set up times to, uh, to have a talk to ensure that everybody was all right. And so we thank God, a good report that all is well there in Lyon, France, and, and in France and other parts of the world, uh, they have been earnestly praying for us in this election. And uh, we thank God for the favorable outcome. Can you say amen, somebody? Uh, but we still got about two months to go. Amen. Now we've got the election out of the way. Now we have to pray for the final vote of the Electoral College as well as the smooth transition. Amen. We'll talk about that as we go forward. So we thank God for his grace and favor on that. And so then I got a call from the Dominican Republic. And we have uh, several churches there. One of our members, Sister Yvette Gaither, is down in Dominican now. And uh, we will make sure, Yvette, that we connect you uh, with Presiding Elder Abraham Rodriguez. And uh, they're the Rodriguez family. They're doing a wonderful job uh, down there. And I learned about an AME primary school in Dominican Republic. 
uh, that has 160 students. And because of COVID and social distancing, et cetera, they're not able to meet. But the Dominican Republic provides free internet for its kids in the whole nation. Yeah, let me say that one more time. The Dominican Republic, the government provides free internet access for all of its children. And how much we paying, how much you pay for yours at home and me, I'm paying for mine. And, you know, you pay, we all paying for something that in other places is free. Amen. Amen. And so I said, well, what do you need to help keep the school open? And they said, we need about 100 more Amazon Fire tablets. I said, well, how much are they? They said, well, they're just $70. I said, so that's about $7,000. And so knowing the generosity of our people and the educational concerns of our people, uh, particularly our missionaries and those who have worked with children and youth around this connectional church, I said to uh, Reverend Anursita Rodriguez, I said, well, you put Union Bethel down for that and we'll take care of those hundred tablets. There's some other needs that they have. Uh, I said, you can share that with different groups, but you put Union Bethel down there and that will give us our balanced outreach uh, for, for mission work in our church anniversary. We're touching around the corner, and we're also touching around the world. Local and, and also regional, of course, as well as global. So give God praise and glory for that. Thank you for your gifts. Allow us to share as you're preparing your gifts. Allow us to share this video all the way from the Dominican Republic. I couldn't have said it any better than that. I talked with them the other day and I said, would you just send me a video so I can show the good people of Union Bethel and our friends? And they sent that video, put it together in about a day and sent it right up to us. I said, will this help? I said, yes, absolutely. So as you are preparing your gift, uh, you'll see on the screen for those who are watching, you can give by Realm or Givelify, uh, Union Bethel AME Church Brandywine, Union Bethel AME Church North, is also in Givelify, either one. For our North members, you give through North. Uh, that's the way we record it, and we thank God for your gifts. Father, now we thank you for the seed that is being sown. For those who've said, yes, I will share my $133 seed to be a blessing to families in this area, part of that 2,500 family feeding, and as well as to the school in Dominican Republic. God, we thank you for the opportunity to sow both locally and globally to touch and transform lives. Bless the seed and the sower, the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen.
We would like to recognize Union Bethel's next Facebook Top Fan of the Week, Sister Cynthia Swift. Thank you, Social Disciples, for your engagement and sharing on this media platform. Your November share orders are due today. Please send your order request to email address ubameoutreach at gmail.com or by calling 301-372-1405. On Wednesday, November the 11th is Veterans Day. Take the time to honor and give a special thanks to those men and women who served in the United States Armed Forces. Presiding Elder Rev. Johnny R. Calhoun and First Lady Rev. Patricia Calhoun are hosting the Washington Capital District Virtual Conference on Friday, November 13th. Visit the website at www.wccapitaldistrict.org to register and join them for worship, workshops, and the Word. Union Bethel High School graduates for Class of 2021 the Scholarship Ministry have detailed instructions and information available for you. If you are interested, please send an email to email address scholarships at ubame.org or call the church office at 301-372-6036. The Union Bethel Bookstore's year in sale will soon be underway. Look for the sale list items in church mailings or communications. Get your Christmas gifts early. First come, first serve. Thank you for your attention. Continue to pray for our pastor, first lady, our church family, and our nation. Happy anniversary, Union Bethel, a church in love and unity through Christ. Now for our closing blessings and benediction. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have been blessed on the mountaintop today and thank God for the opportunity to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in your home. Pray that you have a blessed week. What a difference a year makes. We thank God that through prayer, God reversed it. Remember that word, God reversed it. Remember that word, God reversed it. Thank you, Pastor Bell, my friend and colleague and brother. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Both now henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Music and worship arts, AV. Awesome job. And to our virtual worship service. Hope you will join us throughout the week and next Sunday to witness and hear God's spoken word. Have a safe and blessed week.